Can I throw in my curveball question at you or Ooh. something I wrestle with? <laughs> Can I say no? <laughs> well, I guess. <laughs> okay. We'll keep you the fuck down. No. Um, uh, so one thing I've tried to wrestle with with this is say, okay, look, I agree with everything you said. You're completely and utterly right uh, about this being theft on the individuals um, and it's a cancerous system that can't work. Has there been benefits to this in that has the money printer led to more money to be available for investment? And therefore, has that accelerated? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Has this accelerated innovation? Uh, and look, there's going to be some people who think big pharma is bad. I get it. Majority of big pharma is bad. <laughs> but ha do we have more MRI machines mm -hmm. available in hospitals that are able to? scan and look for cancers uh, do we have innovation yeah, yeah. in terms I, I see, of I see what you're getting at, yeah. um, immunotherapy that wouldn't have happened without this have we got uh have we had in have we had all this innovation off the back of it that has lifted us up because the the other side is mm. is that we do have less people in poverty now than a certain period do we know for certain <clears throat> that without this system right it might have been fairer the growth might have been slower, and generally we might have listed people out of poverty slower. Do, do mm -hmm. we know the net impact? And, I, and look, it's not that I'm a fan of it and supporting it. I'm just more it's intrigued to know. It's steel manning it. Yeah, yeah, is it? Like, is there a... Ch you so know, I should come back to telling you off for using growth. The word growth, you misused it. Okay. That's a separate I apologize. Um, but you understand... You haven't read chapter three. I haven't come read on. chapters one to the last... <laughs> uh, do you know what? I actually haven't... I'm trying to think the last time I actually read a book. I've listened. I Should listened I answer to, while you're thinking about that? <laughs> I listen to. I know. I listen to books. Oh, yeah. If they're yeah, not you don't available. have an audio book, that's what you need. Yeah, uh, we do soon. Okay. I don't know when. I don't want to throw a guy to under the bus, but it's coming. Hurry up, guy. Um, guy Swan, we love you. Um, I I don't read books anymore. I don't have the time to read books because I can. I listen. I can listen to a book while mm. doing shit. I can, That's I, fair. Yeah, I yeah. can listen to a book in a day. You, I could probably listen to yours in a day and I'll find jobs to do mm -hmm. while I'm listening to it. Mm -hmm. I don't have the time to sit down and read. I don't have the time to sit and do fuck all. I don't have the time <laughs> to not do stuff. So uh, audiobook would be very welcome. But um, you understand the sentiment of the yeah, question? Yeah, no, no, of course, of course. Uh, and it's a good question. It's, it's, this is an entirely worthwhile steel man, I think. Um, I think the answer is... We can't prove you it. You can know but almost certainly not not and the yeah as in almost certainly things are not better because of this we haven't made good investment decisions because of this and the reason is is it the concord analogy oh, what's the concord analogy i don't know that that we had massive innovation in air travel all the way up to about Concord mm -hmm. and that and then the innovation in air travel slowed down and why did that happen? Well you can look at us coming off gold standard and yeah. Mm. The way capital was allocated changed a lot around that kind of period in time and I don't really know anything about Concord, unfortunately. Well that was the last greatest innovation. <laughs> I, mean, I know what it is, but in, in air travel. Uh -huh. We went supersonic in was it the seventies Concord? Seventies, yeah. Yeah. And then since then we there's we don't have Concord anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't have supersonic is it supersonic? Yeah. Yeah, so was that not Metro? down to like fuel prices and all sorts of stuff like that? I'm we we haven't Didn't had that innovation crash as well. In Paris. One crashed in that. one crashed in Paris, but and, and the interesting thing about that, Virgin tried to buy all the remaining planes, planes and then wouldn't sell them. Mm. Um but what I'm saying is we haven't the innovation we've had since then has been different. I mean that that may fit. I just don't want to pretend to know yeah. much about aviation. Um that may fit my answer. Uh, the reason it's almost certainly not the case is that it could be, there's maybe two sides to this. So one is that it could be the case entirely by accident. Like there could be a fluke that has sort of made it through. But even to explain that, it's, I, I just, I don't think it's intellectually coherent to be arguing for this on any grounds other than that you, or at least somebody, it doesn't need to be you specifically, but somebody is smarter than 
everyone else combined. Okay. Because that's the product of a, of a, I mentioned this before, I forget in what context, but that's the product of a genuinely free market is it's kind of democratic in some way. It, it aggregates everybody's revealed preferences, not just what they say they want, but what they actually want as determined by their actions. And so for you to suggest, for anybody, I don't mean you, but for anybody to suggest that the the product of interfering with, in this particular case, we're talking, I mean, this is true in any market, but we're talking about capital markets, right? Interfering with capital markets because you want to create better outcomes, basically, is the gist of the question. That could only happen if whoever is doing the interfering literally knows more than everybody else combined. And so that's why I think it's extremely unlikely. They, In fact, it's so overwhelmingly unlikely that it, I would say it's basically impossible except by fluke. Is so it the, kind of the broken window fallacy? I don't think so, but go, go on. Like, What do well, you think it, the, the idea of that obviously is? is that if someone breaks a window, does it boost the economy because you then have to hire a glazier to fix the window, but you don't know where the capital would have gone otherwise? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's obviously related in that sense, yeah, that there's... I think it sort of, it's very likely implicit in asking that question. I mean, you were kind of doing it as a devil's advocate, I suppose, but if you were putting it forward seriously, I think it would have to be implicit that you're not fully on top of the idea of there being an opportunity cost to that capital, mm -hmm. which is where a lot of this comes from, right? Just lack of awareness of opportunity costs, thinking like, oh, I want to fix this problem. And in doing so, there will be no bad consequences whatsoever. We'll just fix it, and then that'll be the end of that. Um, so, so you're saying there is a efficient market hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you don't stand for, but you um, kind of are. Oh, do you want me to go back to growth, by the way? Because yes. I can tie... Why is that a swear word? Yeah, exactly. Well, no, it's not. If you use it properly, it's great. <laughs> Um, but you can tie in the broken window fallacy, which is what reminded me that I'd said that a few minutes ago. So this is a particular, this is like one of my almost favorite pet peeves of fiatism. Fiatism. Um, yeah, or fiat fuckery that I... Uh, are we going to be calling this I, show I, fiat fuckery? Yeah, we probably are, yes. We are going to be calling I, um, it. I definitely get a kind of a perverse kick out of pointing this out like it shouldn't make me happy because it's it's not a sort of a sad topic but it's i just got like nerd out on it a bit that the way the word growth is used including the way you used it which is why i got pissy um in almost every discussion of economics or well macroeconomics or finance is subtly wrong in a way that on the face of it maybe doesn't matter that much it's kind of just semantics but it's worth exploring because the misunderstanding itself reveals, uh, it sheds a light on fiat fuckery, right? On, on, the, on the other deeper misunderstandings that you have to have to take fiat seriously. So when most people say growth, what they really mean is a better word would just be increase. What they're talking about, they'll usually say like GDP growth. For example, I think that's what you meant before when you said it. Um, no, yeah, I, I didn't think it through. But but I know GDP GDP growth is kind of like gaslighting because <laughs> it's not fucking real. Oh, exactly. This is what I'm. This is where I'm going. Like it, just it, more specific it, about it makes, why it's not it, real. It makes me think of like Einstein and relativity. <laughs> How? <laughs> well, because like you know, okay, you can have GDP growth. Mm -hmm. But you have to consider inflation in that. Oh, and sure. I mean, you just have real GDP growth, though. Like, that's easy to strip out. That's, that's not that. But, but they never give us real GDP growth. Well, because, yeah. because that means they but have I mean, to say the But I mean, if you know the two is... numbers, it's not hard. Mm. All right, come on. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, they, people who say this should say increase because what they are talking about is the ratio of almost always one flow to another. I'll explain what I mean by that. So uh, GDP is a flow in the sense that it is an amount of, I'll just say dollars as like the unit, but fiat, whatever, money. Um, it's an amount of money over a period of time. That, that should be fairly 
easy to appreciate. And so is, for example, that's more like a macroeconomics example. You want to talk about finance instead, so would revenue be. So people talk about revenue growth. Um, they're making the same mistake. Profit growth is at least a bit more helpful. You'll see why in a minute, but even that's wrong. In all of these cases, if you're just comparing GDP from year one to year zero or revenue or profit or whatever, that is a ratio of one flow to another. It would be better described as an increase. What growth actually is, is the ratio of a flow to the stock that generated it. In this, and so the, hmm. this no, idea yeah, of the concept I'm of stocks you. and flow are extremely important. So in this case, well, actually in all of the three examples I gave, the, the stock would be measured in dollars, right? Yeah. So with the economy, it's actually a little bit complicated because I'll go in the other order, actually, sorry. So with profit and revenue, the stock is the capital employed by the company. Mm -hmm. And this is where you get various financial metrics that people are comfortable with, like return on equity, things like that. Um, with the economy, it's a bit trickier because you can, you can appreciate in principle what it ought to be, which is the aggregation of all the capital employed. But you immediately run into problems because there's no way of measuring that. We don't need to worry about why that's the case. It's just interesting to appreciate. Now, what this, the metric you want, by the way, is uh, with a company would be profit over capital employed. You can tweak that in various ways, like return on equity is actually slightly more specific, not that important to this discussion. But the way you interpret it is really important because that tells you, should tell you most of the time, something like how sustainably can this grow? as opposed to revenue going up from one year to the next, which has, tells you nothing whatsoever about sustainability. And so back to what you were mentioning before about all this like tech bubble nonsense that all the investment has gone to, very easy way to verify that that capital was all misallocated is that it has never generated any, maybe not never, but mostly has not generated any returns on capital. Their revenue has gone up and up and up, and hence they're very exciting and grow, growing and whatever else but they're just fundamentally poor investments for the most part. And in, in macroeconomics, it's, it's the same thing. If you- Is that care, only managed, is that only truly known as a net across the economy? Because you could have individual examples where there is a high return, but- Of course, yeah. But, but the yeah. only way you really know is net across the economy, capital investors versus return. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I think this is what you were getting at anyway, that- if you only care about GDP going up, which is the aggregate equivalent of just a company's revenue yeah. going up, that is by no, it could be a good thing, but there's no guarantee whatsoever that that actually reflects anything good having happened to cause it. And that's where the broken window fallacy comes in. In the broken window fallacy, your stock is clearly going down because you have one less window now, yeah. but you're revenue is your flow is going up because you have to spend time fixing it because you employed a glacier yeah and so you're in that case clearly your return would be negative because you've just wasted time but you're, it could you're be back at the same point growth. but if you only care as the point of the fallacy right if you only care about the activity then you see it as a good thing mm -hmm. and so you and this actually this ties back to loads of things we've talked about already this is well that is capital misallocation right um, aggregating this to an economy as a whole is, uh, <clears throat> oh, sorry, Ooh, take a sip. But just while you're having a drink, going back to the, that fallacy though, it's very mm. easy to see why people perceive that as growth and a good thing because, yeah, of course. The, yeah, because yeah. the other thing's invisible. Yes, the, the second yes order effect exactly. Is so this is why a moment ago when I said, if you aggregate this to the entire economy, it's very tricky because the capital employed part, you can't really measure properly. Mm -hmm. You can appreciate what it should be, but there's no way of really knowing what it is, which is why you have to be rigorous and disciplined when you're thinking about it. Because it's basically where this, where this falls out is just intellectual laziness. It's like, can't measure that. Oh, but I can measure that. So I'll just measure that. So we have to be a little bit more sophisticated <laughs> and honest in how we yeah. measure things. Yeah. Hmm. And almost all 
not just capital misallocation, but I, I mean, we're at a point like zero or negative interest rates is just capital consumption falls into this trap. If you, if you're consuming capital, that's growth. That's, I mean, that's what, that is like revenue GDP are essentially measures of consumption, right? Not value added, just, you know, not, not how much value did you create, just how much value did you like move around, right? If you consume capital, you've got growth, but you almost by definition have negative returns. You're destroying real wealth, but you're making yourself feel good because you're doing something at least, 